So what we're going to go over today is just how I learn Chapman's points. Um, and I draw it the same way every time so that no matter what, for any exam from now on and even on boards, you have a quick way of just drawing it all out. That way you can get these easy points on the test. So what you got to do first is draw out the skeleton. Um, so it's basically like a stick figure of the front of the body. So we're just going to draw that real fast. And then I add a couple more points here. That way you can kind of keep everything straight. Um, and then you can have the whole thing on one drawing. So you've got front of the chest, abdominal wall with your belly button there, and then your femurs as well as humerus, and then this is supposed to be the coracoid process. So what I like to do is put all the anterior and posterior points on this drawing. Um, that way, no matter what type of a question it is, you know, you can get those questions right. And it's really important to pay attention to, are they asking about an anterior point or a posterior point? So you just kind of draw these little dots in here and it'll make a little bit more sense once we get it all drawn and then get it labeled, but it's a real easy way to draw real fast. It's a little bit off center there, but you get the gist of it. And then I like to draw both sides of the femur, that way you know which one is which there. Okay, so now that we've got all of our points drawn, um, we can go ahead and start labeling it. So what we've got here, this is supposed to be lateral to the humerus, and that's gonna be the retina. And I'm gonna put the the posterior points in a different color um, just to keep it all clear. So the mastoid process is that one. Then medial to the humerus, you've got the neck and the posterior points are transverse process of C3 to 7. On the coracoid process is the cerebellum and it's superior to transverse process of C1. This one here, so superior to the clavicle is middle ear and its posterior point is transverse process of C1. Then we've got sinuses here, tongue is on rib 2, and tonsils is between. You can also put the pharynx point in there, but I've never had a question about that. And all of these, these three, are the articular pillars of C2. And then from then, from now on, coming down this middle part, these are all just in the intercostal space. We've got second intercostal space, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And the side does matter, so make sure you guys kind of keep, keep straight those. So you've got the heart, on the left side, and then bronchus, esophagus on the on the right side. Upper lung bilaterally, lower lung bilaterally. The left we've got the stomach, which is the acidic part, and then the stomach peristalsis which I have had questions about that, so you gotta make sure you keep that straight. And then in the seventh intercostal space on the left is the spleen. And then, so same thing on 
these for the third and fourth space here is the lung and then on the fifth one is liver and then the sixth is liver and gallbladder and then the seventh is pancreas and all of these points correspond to the same transverse process of the vertebra so the second intercostal space would be transverse process of T2, transverse process of T3, transverse process of T4. I usually don't write this part down, but I'm trying to keep it all straight for you guys here. Okay, so then the eighth, ninth, and tenth intercostal space all correlate to the small intestine. And then once again, transverse process of T8, 9, and 10. And now on the tip of the 12th rib on the right is the appendix. And the reason why they love this one so much is because its posterior point is T11. So that's one of the big ones here. So it's not, it doesn't follow the normal trend here of, of it matching. So it's the tip of the 12th rib and T11. So then we're moving down into our abdomen here. So we've got adrenal and kidney, which makes sense since the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidney. And you just have to keep it straight, the words. So the adrenal gland is two inches superior, one inch lateral to your belly button. And the kidney is just one and one. But it does make sense that since the adrenals sit on top of the kidney, they would be higher. For the adrenals, it's T11 again. For the kidney, it's L1. Then in the peri-umbilical space is bladder, which is L2. All these are transverse process, so I haven't been writing that in there. And then superior to the pubic bone is going to be ovary and testis of course there are gonads here for one and then the other one there is going to be the urethra so they're on the same place on the front but they're in different places on the back so our gonads are t10 and the urethra is l3 and then inferior is going to be uterus which is l5 and then lastly, we've got on the bottom here on our femurs. So if you guys remember, um, you cut the colon in half and kind of flip it down over the legs. So on the right side here, closest to you is going to be cecum. And then we've got ascending colon and then transverse colon. And then on the left side here, you've got sigmoid colon, descending colon, and then the rest of the transverse colon, of course. And all of those are transverse process L2 to four. So I like to say L2 to four keeps your colon off the floor, but whichever way you, you learn to keep it straight. And then on the lesser trochanter here is going to be the rectum. And its posterior point is a little bit difficult. So the words are lateral, middle sacrum, which doesn't really mean a whole lot, but just for completeness sake. And then lateral to the um, femur there on the side. Usually they put it like anterior IT band and lateral IT band, um, but if you can just kind of keep it straight here, it's going to be the prostate. And then PSIS is its point there. So if you just practice drawing this over and over and over again, and like I said, I never really write these in because they just kind of make sense. Um, so as long as you know where they are there, um, the big ones to know is they ask a lot here at the top with our head and neck kind of locations and then keeping straight the colon. Um, I had, did have a question once about situs inversus. So the heart was on the right side, which means that the colon would be switched. That to me, that seems a little bit crazy. But just keep that in mind that, you know, you cut the colon in half and kind of fold it down over your legs and then how it would lay there. So that's it for Chapman's points.